Piper Studies, we have my sister, biological sister. Her name is Michelle Patton. And I'm Melanie Bitimo. And it's a pleasure to be with you today. It's a pleasure to serve you. And as Jesus Christ, according to Philippians chapter 2, he thought it not robbery to be equal to God, but took upon him the form of a servant, and he humbled himself even unto the death of the cross. And in return, God hath highly exalted him and gave him a name that's above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in things in heaven and under heaven and under the earth, that Jesus Christ, he is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. And everybody who humbles themselves today, everybody who listens unto the voice of Jesus can come unto him and have a pasture which leadeth us unto rest, so to say, and eternal life. And today is the day of salvation. Amen. Not tomorrow. While God at the day of visitation, and the day of visitation means when God is tugging on your heart. Yes. At that time, when God is tugging on your heart, you better take heed to it because he might not tug it on it again. Mm -hmm. Because after you rejected it, he was like, okay, he'll give, just give you what you want. Amen. God is not going to force anybody to serve him. You have to decide whether or not you want to serve the Lord Amen. or whether you not you don't want to serve the Lord. Amen. And we pray today we have a good message that will encourage you. Maybe you feel like you've been come against so much. Everywhere you turn, it seems like constant opposition. And you say, Lord, what am I doing wrong? Lord, what's going on in my life? But maybe you're, you're suffering for righteousness sake. We want to encourage you and say, happy are ye. Rejoice when men revile you for the name of Jesus Christ. Re rejoice when men persecute you because you're preaching God's word. Rejoice when, when men speak well of, not when men speak well of you, but when men speak evil of you. Yes. Mm -hmm. But yet you're in the word of God. Amen. And it seems like nobody wants to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? That lets us know that we are doing something right. Amen. And I just want to say one thing. People think that just because you say you're a Christian, oh, I'm a Christian. And like, oh, they're going to persecute me because I say I'm a Christian. No, that's not why you're getting persecuted. Just mm -hmm. because you say you're a Christian. Anybody can say that they're a Christian. Right. But it's what you believe. Amen. What you teach. The word of God. What does the word of God say? It's because of the word. Amen. Is why people are being persecuted. Amen. Because they're preaching the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Not just because they say, I'm, oh, I'm a Christian. No, because they're preaching the word of God. Amen. Let's give them an example of how Jesus was persecuted just by preaching the word. Yes. How people were so moved with envy and envy anger and hatred just because of what Jesus taught. How was that possible? Jesus was here, it says, to, to help the people. Mm -hmm. Those that are blind, those that are sick, those that are, are deaf. Jesus was sent to help them people, the poor people, the blind people, the lame, the maim, all the little people. Jesus came to help them. He says that he's the Prince of Peace. Amen. So why did people hate him so much when Jesus had, he brought all these good tidings. He let them know that hell is real and you can have salvation and deliverance. All you had to do was repent and get in covenant. Amen. Tell them why they was mad. Well, Jesus had said, talked about um, in Luke chapter 16. I'm going to start with verse 9. And he says, and I say unto you, make yourselves friends of mammon and of righteousness that when ye fail they may receive you into everlasting habitations he said this is a faithful saying with he that is the he that is faithful and which is least is the faithful also in much he that is unjust and that is least he sh is unjust also in much he says if therefore ye have not been faithful in unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches and if ye have not been faithful in what which is an, that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own ye no servant can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold on to one and despise the other ye cannot serve god and mammon and it says in verse 14 and the pharisees also who were covetous heard all these things 
and they derided him. If you look up that word derided in the Strong's Concordance, it's 1592. It says to snare outright at and deride. Hmm. So they deride, they were covetous and they snared at him and they derided him and they mocked him because they, he said that you cannot serve God and mammon mm -hmm. because that that was their god mammon was their god okay now let's tell the people what mammon is um for those of you who may not understand there's again as we say that there's doctrines jesus had told his disciples to beware of the leaven of the pharisees which is hypocrisy i believe that was in luke chapter 12. Mm -hmm. in other words beware of the doctrine of these hypocrites which will separate you from god and I believe that one of them is the God of money. Yes. The God of wealth. Mm -hmm. Is that what it means? Yes. It says confidence that is figuratively wealth personified. Mammonous that is avarice. Hmm. And that word avarice is avaricious. Mm -hmm. It's talking about uh, uh, an extreme greediness yes. for gain. Okay. So now let's go over to Matthew chapter 23. And this chapter in Matthew is filled with different um exposures that jesus had did yes. to a certain group of people who thought that they were holy mm -hmm. who loved money who killed who caused wars so if you think about what's going on today even in our society you see a lot of wars taking place you see a lot of um prosperity preaching you see a lot of um what else do you see that's going on across the land that would be a type of exposure even how jesus exposed them mm -hmm. what what's a big thing i say war right now because they're starting oh, a lot yeah. of war oh yes trying to say oh well this country is one obama's we need to bomb them and all that is just war propaganda to mm -hmm. um what to cause the people to go along with their wars mm -hmm. which there is no good reason for war i mean they're the ones that promote it they start it they're the ones that's um causing it mm -hmm. basically and what they do is they use all this stuff they commit they make all this chaos yes they make all these wars they fund both sides of the wars they don't care who wins they well they make sure the person that they want to win wins mm -hmm. and so they fund both sides to cause all these wars to happen and then they want to bring in oh we have a solution to end all wars that's part of their propaganda yes everything that they do to create a mindset in people to deceive them it's mm -hmm. done intentionally it's created intentionally to program people's minds to go along with what they say rather by tv rather by books magazines billboards um papers everywhere is filled with propaganda to again create a mindset in people their beliefs even in their behavior you know that through propaganda can cause one country to hate another country do you know that through pop propaganda can cause one one big change to take place for an, for example maybe their fashion they oh this is the new style with so and so next thing you know the whole world is dressing like it or the whole world is acting like it i'm just saying that they use propaganda to create a mindset into people to go along with their beliefs mm -hmm. when i say their beliefs it's the person that's creating this propaganda yeah. now let's go over to matthew chapter 23 jesus had spoke about them he called them hypocrites. He called them, you want to be lifted up and sit in the chiefest seats. You even go and sit in Moses' seats, ye hypocrites. They want to be seen by men to appear holy and righteous. But to talk about their money, as we mentioned over in Luke chapter 16, Jesus also mentioned their money over here in Matthew chapter 23, how they worship money. And I believe that he's speaking to the unrepented, israel who serve at the end of the day satan they're actually satan worshipers and you can follow them all the way to john chapter 8 how they withstood jesus they withstood moses they withstood the prophets and you think it's changed what has changed do you think that these people have have gone anywhere no it says in the last days evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived so where'd they go they're still here today mm -hmm. and guess what the power that works with these people 
when I say the power that works with these people, like we said, that they actually serve the devil, Satan himself, I believe, has given these people power to perform even, maybe even miracles to deceive people. But now let's go over to Matthew chapter 23. What's the verse we was wanting to share on stating how they actually worship the money? Yes, in verse 16, it tells you, well, verse 14 tells you how they obtained the money and how they were getting money through um, devouring widows' houses. And um, it talks about in verse 16, he says, Woe unto you blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Jesus says, Ye fools and blind, for whether is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold. And this is how what they were worshiping. They thought this gold was so great that they, you better not swear by the gold because that's the God. That's mm -hmm. our God mm -hmm. because that's so great. Jesus says, you fool and you blind people. Mm -hmm. He says, the temple is greater than the gold yeah. because you worship God in the temple. There's even another story that kind of goes along with it is Mark chapter 7. Um, and it's speaking unto these appearing to be righteous people also that even Isaiah had prophesied about and it's mentioned over here in Mark chapter 7 even verse 6 it says well hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites this people honors me with their lips but their heart is far from me it says how be it in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men so they don't even have the commandments of God but they if you follow them over in Matthew chapter 23 they appeared to have the Moses laws but you know what they didn't they had their own laws themselves they made their own teachings they made their own books and they wanted to claim oh we're of Moses we sit in Moses seat but they <laughs> didn't they created their own things they're behind the scenes mm -hmm. they don't come out and tell you the truth because if they did they'll be kicked out people yes. would not receive them so they have to work in the behind the scenes covertly inconspicuous privily privately deceitful stealthy way so nobody notices them mm -hmm. and it tells you again in mark chapter 7 this tells you another thing how they use the temple of god in deceived people let me tell you what it says and this is still in mark chapter 7 but let's go over to verse 9 full well you reject the commandment of god that you may keep your own tradition this is their own teachings their own laws their own i don't even want to say laws their own beliefs maybe it says in verse 10, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is korban, that is to say a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited to me, he shall be free. So it tells you in verse 13, They're making the word of God of none effect through their traditions, which ye have delivered, and many such like things you do. And when it's talking about this korban, it's talking about a gift or type of money that was put into the temple. So they justify their actions by, oh, we're putting money into the temple, but guess who controlled the temple? They themselves were in the, content, in the temple running the show, but they want to give it to the temple and pretend it's a good thing, but in return it wasn't because guess what? The money was coming back to themselves. Instead of the money going to their mother, to their father, to the poor, to the needy, which is what's supposed to been done, Mm -hmm. That's what the proceeds for the building of the church. I don't want to say the building of the church, but the money that was given to the church was supposed to be basically for the ministering of the gospel. Amen. It was supposed to be for the furthering of the gospel. It's supposed to help the poor, help the needy, those that come to church to hear the word of God, not to get to the temple to accumulate upon the lust for those who control the temple. So there you go. You have another scripture. Amen. Well, just like how they was doing it, this and they were evil in the days of Jesus. And how they were doing all this in the temple. Mm -hmm. And how evil they were doing and doing it in secret. Another scripture to tell you the how the, what they were doing in the temple of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And doing it in secret was in Ezekiel 8. And it shows you how they never have changed. They've always done this. And they continue to do it in the days of Jesus. And they're still doing it today. Mm -hmm. They might not have their temple, but they have their synagogues. Yes. Which Jesus says they are the synagogue of Satan in Revelations 2.9, 1 
Revelations 3 9 and it talks about how they say that they are Jews and they do lie but they are of the synagogue of Satan and it says that in Ezekiel chapter 8 he tells them verse 12 son of man he said and then he said unto me son of man hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark every man in the chamber of chambers of his imagery for they say the Lord seeth does not the Lord hath forsaken the earth hmm they was doing what were they doing in secret they was doing all these wicked abominations it says in verse 9 he says go and see unto go and he said unto me go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here where was he talking about he was talking about in the temple and it says he, they saw every form of creeping things abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about mm. and then he goes on to say the one in verse 14 woman weeping for Tammuz then he goes on to say in verse 15 he says I'll show you greater abominations and verse 16 he tell he brings them into the inner court of the Lord's house and at the door of the temple and at the porch and the altar and he says he saw 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east and they worshiped the sun toward the east and who is this talking about again the house of Israel and they were doing it in the temple of the Lord the house of Israel yes wow I think it's eye-opening mm -hmm. and even if you read it over in Isaiah chapter 2 yes Does, is it speaking now is this the same people some people may say I get confused on that is oh that's talking to different people that's you know a figure of speech yeah that was back then that wasn't back in those days in the old testament well let's tell them according to isaiah chapter 2 now mind you jesus spoke of the prophets over in matthew wasn't it didn't we speak yes even mark 7 mm -hmm. how jesus used the prophet isaiah mm -hmm. um you can find it in numerous of scriptures even luke chapter 4 how jesus spoke out of isaiah the prophet and also in second peter chapter 1 it tells you about how we do well if we take heed unto the prophets yes because i believe that the prophets expose a lot that's going to be happening even in the last days how do we prove it let's go there verse isaiah two. chapter 2 mm -hmm. verse 2 mm -hmm. this is the prophet isaiah speaking of the things that shall come to pass it says in the last days in verse 1 he's speaking about judah and jerusalem you can follow it down to verse 5 and it speaks about the house of Jacob if you follow the house of Jacob the name Jacob itself means surplanter it tells you about the house of Israel how they took something that did not belong to them and it tells you about their characteristics of the type of people they are in verse 6 oh my goodness let's see it talks about them even being soothsayers how they are replenished from the east it talks about even how they please themselves with the children of strangers michelle tell them about their land remember we talked about the mm -hmm. worshiping of gold yes it says their land is full of silver and gold neither is there any end of their treasures notice today in israel they are the richest country they are but yet they don't want you to know that because they want to keep collecting money mm -hmm. oh yes we need to give more money to israel so they can build their temple mm -hmm. they have all the wars um all the bombs that they're making now they have all these all these weapons that they have oh we need to defend ourselves we have a right to defend ourselves look no one wants to bomb them no one wants to come against them is they love the opposition they make this opposition themselves to bring this like so-called pity oh mm -hmm. we need people to pity us we need your money come give us your money that's all it's all about because yeah. that's what they worship and it says their land is full of silver and gold neither is any end of their treasures it says their land is full of horses neither is there any end of their chariots and this is talking about for war mm -hmm. it's talking about what do they use horses and chariots for war war this is what they have all these weapons in israel for war this is all their war propaganda because they want everybody to believe everybody's against them to cause war it's all a propaganda to make you believe hey they hate us no we don't hate israel we don't hate the jews 
we don't hate nobody the bible says the love god is love mm -hmm. we love everybody but yet we're not going to believe their lies yes but just because we love them that don't mean we have to believe their lies and one thing as we mentioned over in this isaiah chapter 2 how it mentions this word soothsayers to understand when we told you how they're behind the scenes even in ezekiel chapter 8 you know what the soothsayers mean it means covertly like behind the scenes you can't see it and also it talks about magic these people are not a joke when we say that they're not a joke they release a curse with the words that they speak if you believe and if you listen to what they say and it talks about you can follow this magic you can follow the magicians you can follow enchantments you can follow the word soothsayers I always say is just get in your Bible study it out look it up in the Bible Strong's concordance we highly suggest that you study your Bible because I believe that there will come a time it's my opinion that they will take away our Bibles I believe that there will be attack on the true Christians that do preach the word that do stand for the word so I'd say right now if you get in your Bible study it you better do it before it's too late the Bible says they that seek me early shall find me and this is talking about wisdom how do we attain wisdom I believe it's through studying God's word because God's word is wisdom so again that soothsayers the number four according to the Bible Strong's concordance is six zero four nine and it talks about an enchanter a sorcerer convertly covertly to act covertly to cover in other words again they're behind the scenes and it talks about to practice magic and these are again the people that are they're behind the scenes uttering or mumbling these magic spells now we're taught that magic spells are just and the witches with the boiling water with her little broomstick and flying across the earth no these are the people that we're exposing today who are behind the scenes they look nice i'm sure they talk nice but if you go along with their teachings and the words they're speaking they release so to say a hex or a curse or an enchantment upon the listener and this so powerful you could look the word enchantment up in the Bible Strong's Concordance number 2266 and 2267 to show you the power even upon a whole society. And remember how we told you how they can use propaganda to turn nations against nations, people against people, to cause war, to cause this belief, that belief. And at the end of the day, it's all a lie. Amen. And even Jesus, the whole, our whole purpose is to say, look, they persecuted Jesus because they expo Jesus exposed them mm -hmm. for who they really were. Jesus told them that they appeared outwardly to be righteous, righteous men. They appeared that way, but within, they were full of hypocrisies and, iniqu and iniquities. Mm -hmm. And they were appearing to be righteous, but they are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Amen. And then he goes on to say, look, you have killed they were witnesses against themselves that they their fathers had killed the prophets they said oh if our fathers if we were in the days of our fathers we would not have killed the prophets jesus says you're a witness against yourself that you'll be the sons of your fathers that killed the prophets he says fulfill ye up your measure meaning good guess what you're going to do the same thing mm -hmm. and it says because look he says in verse 34 I send unto you prophets, wise men, scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute from city to city. And what did they do to Paul? They persecuted him from city to city. To, and they stirred up the devout, or devout people. Mm -hmm. They always stirred up the Gentiles, and it made them, their minds, evil affected against the Christians. Mm -hmm. And then if you go on today they're just still doing the same thing they're mm -hmm. going to persecute the people of god because guess what god has made us ministers at flaming fire to mm -hmm. expose darkness and the reason why they hated him because jesus exposed their sins and exposed their lies mm -hmm. and they hate the truth amen people that don't love the truth they're going to be turned over according to second thessalonians chapter two they're going to be turned over to damnable heresies and strong delusions that they should believe believe a lie and be damned uh-huh and you know what it's important that we listen to the bible 
because again if you follow the scriptures you could read Isaiah chapter 47 verses 8 and 10 I believe how these same people the house of Israel so to say were claiming to be God how yes. they said that I am and there's none beside me you know what even Isaiah 65 5 what did they say there they said we are holy come not near thee for I am holier than thou so they're talking to God yes so they willfully knowingly reject God because they themselves are lifted up thinking mm -hmm. that they themselves are God yes and I believe that give an example proven with our Bible to show you how they willfully reject Jesus Christ you could read in Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 through 44 to give you the example how Jesus exposed them there for willfully rejecting Jesus Christ how they did not repent you can even back up one verse in Matthew chapter 21 verse 32 it says John came unto you in the way of righteousness and you believed him not but the publicans and the harlots believed him and ye when ye had seen it repented not afterwards that you might believe so it, it tells you how these people did not repent mm -hmm. but in return you follow verses 33 through 44 and how it gives the example of how this householder had planted a vineyard and hedged it about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to the husbandmen and these husbandmen were supposed to take care of the flock or take care of the vineyard mm -hmm. but instead they wanted to what control it they wanted control to, it yes and so it tells you i'll cut to the chase at the end of the day in verse 38 it tells you about the how the lord said last of all he sent unto them his son saying they will reverence my son and this represents jesus christ verse 38 but when the husbandmen saw the son they said among themselves this is error in other words they knew who jesus was mm -hmm. and is and is to come yes. okay but what did they say come let us kill him and let us seize his inheritance now remember we told you over in isaiah chapter 2 how it was speaking to the house of jacob which is so to say the house of Israel, how they are the supplanters, how they take something that doesn't belong to them. They want to try to steal the promises. They want to try to steal the blessings. They want to try to steal everything, but it does not belong to them. And eventually Jesus Christ is going to come and humble these people as Isaiah chapter 2 verses 10 through 22, I think tells you of how Jesus is going to humble these people. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a humbling take place, okay? It even tells you that in Revelation chapter 6 verse 15 16 17 you can even back up to tell you about when the sixth seal is open because of the wrath of the lamb because of the perversion the wickedness of these people has so to say reached this harvest Amen. time is up Amen. and it tells you how they said come let us season his inheritance and they called him and cast it out of the vineyard and they slew him and what did Jesus tell them in verse 42 and 43 how they rejected the stone how Jesus Christ is the stone that the builders rejected therefore I say unto you verse 43 therefore I say unto you the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringeth forth the fruits thereof and this is where it's no longer about a land anymore it's no longer about a group of people because by their rebellion the house of Israel provoked God to jealousy and says he's basically going into a Gentile nation and those of you who accept Jesus Christ salvation is to all it's not about a special group but it's according to your faith according to repentance and we pray that you got something out of our program if you want more information we will be more than glad to share it you can email us at Pastor Inman I-N-M-A-N at A-T-T dot net or 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. I hope you got something out of the message and may God go with you.